Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, perspectives from members of the Congress on the 2012 Farm Bill, plus how one Nebraska operation is benefiting from DNA technology. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, the severe drought is continuing to plague cattlemen in the south central United States, including Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, and especially Texas. Texas is the country's largest beef producing state with over 5 million head of cattle. With only 8% of normal precipitation since the beginning of the year and exceptionally high feed costs, cattlemen in that part of the country are facing some tough decisions. Climate expert Art Douglas says while the drought has gone on for over seven months, unfortunately, there's not much relief in sight. There were areas up through about the first week of July that only had about 8% normal precipitation since January the 1st. And this is actually, for many of these areas, the driest ever on record going all the way back to 1900. The North Atlantic changed into what we call a, a North Atlantic warm oscillation in 1994. The Pacific went into a very cold phase, West Coast phase, in 1998. For the next six to seven years, we could still be in a really dicey situation with these two oceans trying to favor drought in the southwest. The current drought is considered to be America's worst drought since the Dust Bowl. Looking ahead to some positive news in the beef industry, Farm Credit recently announced its national contributions of more than $2 million to agriculture in rural America. And here to talk more about the program is Christina Bowen, Director of National Contributions for Farm Credit. Christina, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, just begin by telling us what your National Contributions program is all about. Absolutely. Well, Farm Credit has a very long history of give, giving back to the communities that they are doing business in. It's actually our 95th anniversary mm -hmm. this year. And a couple of years ago, it was decided that in addition to those contributions, we would also create a national contributions program to support organizations that are improving the lives and livelihoods of farmers and ranchers in rural America. <laughs> And we primarily have three focus areas. We have what we call advocates of agriculture. And these are organizations who really are protecting the lives, the livelihoods, the health um, of farmers and ranchers. So a good example of that would be AFBF, American Farm Bureau Federation. Our second category then is young, beginning, small, and minority farmers. Obviously, it's very important to, well, our country that we continue to have people go into the field of farm, or to the industry of farming and ranching. So, do a lot of that. FFA is a good example of that. Um, NCBA, um, National Cattlemen's Beef Association, we support youth activities at their annual conference and a little bit beyond that as well. Um, and so those are two good examples of young beginning farmers. A good example of how we are supporting organizations that support minority, minority farmers would be our contributions to Federation of Southern Cooperatives. And then we have a third category, which is Friends of Agriculture, America's Heartland. Um, a lot of organizations that are help telling the stories of our farmers and ranchers across the United States. Can you give us any examples of, of other particular programs or organizations that, uh, that you support uh, with this program? Absolutely. Um, Annie's Project is just a f wonderful program that we support, and it is really a program that create, has created a curriculum and classroom education for women farmers, so mm -hmm. teaches them a lot about succession planning, mm -hmm. business planning, et cetera. That's great. And, and um, tell us a little bit if we have folks at home watching who are leaders within various organizations and want to apply uh, for one of these, uh, these grants or, or, or these funds, uh, how would they go about doing that? It's very easy. They go onto our website, which is farmcredit.com. There is a big button right on the right-hand side of that that says apply for a grant or sponsorship. And that'll take them through a fairly short um, application process. And then it goes straight on to us for review. 
And, and when is the uh, next application deadline, if I might ask? We have one right coming right up, and that's on August 2nd. It's oh. a quick turnaround, but we still are accepting applications for that round. And then we have another one the fourth of the year on November 1st. Very good. Well, thank you for all the investments that uh, Farm Credit uh, makes to rural America and the agricultural industry in general. We appreciate it. It's certainly a privilege for us to support these incredible partners. For more information on Farm Credit's National Contributions Program, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. From the countryside to Capitol Hill, we talk with members of Congress about what's ahead for the 2012 Farm Bill in this week's Cattlemen's Capital Concerns. The point I would make that uh, in terms of a farm bill, farmers and ranchers have already contributed six billion dollars in crop insurance to the deficit. We've already paid at the store and that uh, if you look at what the farm bill has cost the taxpayer, if you want to put it in that way, uh, we're under 24 billion of what the Congressional Budget Office said that we would spend in 2002-2008. But not too, not too many people understand this <clears throat> or want to. And so consequently, we have a big bullseye on our back in regards to people's, oh, cut those farm subsidies. And uh, they either don't understand it, don't want to understand it, or haven't ever understood it, and probably never will. So we have a, we have a tough fight on our hands to tell our story, because we have to feed over nine billion people in the next couple of decades. And if we're going to do that, and that's a moral issue and a national security issue, why on earth would you want to be passing a budget or a number or regulations for that matter uh, that are contrary to the farmer and rancher. So we have a story to tell and uh, all those that have been participating in the past, boy we need your partnership now more than ever before. We're just starting the auditing process. We'll be having hearings, seeing what's worked, what hasn't worked uh, in the Farm Bill, uh, kind of laying the groundwork. And then next year we'll get into more of the specifics. Uh, I believe that it's going to be less amount of money that's going to be available for that. So that will have to be discussed and decided where the priorities are going to be and uh, how, we, how we deal with uh, still providing a safety net and promoting agriculture, keeping that uh, safe, reliable food supply uh, for American consumers, but at the same time in our situation that we have in our country, uh, not having as much money, we can't keep borrowing 42 cents out of every dollar. We're going to have to uh, match those things up. So it's going to be an interesting uh, process. We've done basically six months of oversight hearings looking at EPA and USDA and everything from gypsa to, to dust rules to spray rules to a variety of things. We continue those oversight hearings and we've advanced into what I would call a, a series of hearings to audit the existing farm bill. How's the money being spent? Is it being spent well? Is it being spent in a fashion that's uh, you know, duplicative, wasteful, uh, uh, programs that perhaps have, uh, not ser don't serve the purpose anymore, could be done more efficiently? We're reviewing all of that. So whether we make spending decisions late this summer or fall or next summer under regular order, the 46 members of the House Agriculture Committee, still one of the most bipartisan committees in Congress, will be prepared, I hope, to make the tough decisions, because we're going we're gonna to do our part in agriculture and rural America when it comes to the federal budget. We don't want to do more than our part, we're going to do our part, but we've got to do it in a way that's wise and thoughtful and factors in the many challenges in the coming months and years. To join the fight on Capitol Hill and take a stand on issues that affect your operation, become a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association by calling one 866 USA Beef or visiting us online at our new and improved website, beefusa.org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. My advice to producers when dealing with respiratory disease is prevention is always worth it. Uh, prevention is always better than treatment. Tips from the experts on preventing calf respiratory diseases on your operation, plus beef quality assurance what you need to know about becoming certified from the comfort of your own home. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD-TV. 
John Deere K-Series loaders. You asked for a machine beefy enough to handle your harsh work environment, and John Deere delivered. Axle coolers, reversing fans, and a dual hydraulic differential lock keep your machine productive for years to come. And with dozens of options, this loader is king of the cattle business. Your dealer can spec a K-Series loader that's just right for you. See your dealer today. In that ring, buyers have an eye out for healthy, verified calves. Range Ready puts a document in hand, like a medical file for each animal, that lets buyers know what they're getting, and most importantly, what they're not. So, go on thinking your word carries all the weight. But in the sale barn, your proof is on this paper. Go on now. Take care of your cattle, and they'll take care of you. Welcome back. Respiratory disease in cattle is one of the most significant health-related issues our industry faces. In fact, it costs producers an average $15 per calf per year. Recently, Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Dave Russell had a chance to visit the Linscoff Thiel Ranch in Isabel, South Dakota to learn more about their progressive operation, their heritage, and how they protect their cattle from respiratory illness. Uh, Les and I have been in the uh, seed stock business for 30 years. Started out with Charley cattle and uh, have added Angus about 10, 12, 15 years ago. So we sell both breeds and uh, pretty much a local regional market. Uh, we sell on the two, the Cheyenne and the Standing Rock Indian Reservation are two of our main areas along with probably 50, 80 miles either side of that. And we also sell a few herd bulls. I'm very fortunate. My wife, Nancy, will be married 25 years next year, and uh, she's a big part of the operation. She does nearly all the office work, keeps me organized, keeps all the records going in and out of the associations, and handles semen accounts and payouts, and uh, she's just a big part of the business. It truly wouldn't be the operation it is without her in it. Uh, from a family standpoint, I've had the opportunity to watch Les and Marsha, our partners, raise four sons in this ranch and uh, they're all involved in his ranch in one form or another, and now they've got kids coming up, and so to see multi-generation families uh, thrive in agriculture is, is really kind of nice. On the Linscoff Thiel Ranch in Isabel, South Dakota, two families have worked hard to develop a strong customer base to market their Charlay, Black Angus, and commercial herds. Oh, we're pretty fortunate, I think, in this region. Our, our cattle economy is good, and uh, uh, so that's kind of the core of our business and our customers' business. Um, we're lucky in that most of our customers uh, derive their living from a cow-calf and some somewhat small grain. So genetics and bulls are a big, big part of their life, and so we try to be a big part of that. Another important goal on the operation, calf health. Brent says focusing on the long-term health of their herds has helped grow and maintain their reputation and customer base. And managing for respiratory health is one of the most important parts of their health program. Our cow-calf operation, uh, at branding time we give all of our calves um, Vista once and uh, Vision 7. And uh, then we booster that in September or first of September around Labor Day usually. And then we booster it uh, the day we weaned, which is usually about the 10th of October. So by the time they're weaned, uh, hopefully we've done a good job and gotten them through about three rounds of vaccination. It's a program that's been developed in partnership with his local veterinarian. Dr. Tammy Winger Merriman says the old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, rings true, especially when it comes to managing respiratory diseases. My advice to producers when dealing with respiratory disease is prevention is always worth it. Uh, prevention is always better than treatment. Uh, when you hit the stage of needing treatment, lung damage is done, uh, morbidity is higher, mortality is higher, so dollars are well spent in prevention. Stay out with your cattle. Get, get, be out there. Be, I think, I think in my experience, you have to strike first and you have to 
uh, vaccinate not only from a preventative standpoint, but when you see something sick, to me, if you wait a couple days or get busy haying or doing something else, you're behind the game and it's a lot harder to prevent scar tissue damage and those kinds of things as compared to being out there and knowing what's going on and staying on top of it. We'll have more on calf respiratory health when we return. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Vista once back. We weren't able to find an equivalent product. I think our practice will be very quick to adopt Vista when it comes back. All of my veterinary colleagues have all talked about the product coming back. We're glad to have Vista back in the product line. Cattlemen that we work with will be glad to have the product. We have a lot of producers. They're excited about it coming back. Yeah, can I recommend Vista once? Yeah, that's going to go right back in the cooler and uh, it goes right back in the cans. Purina's wind and rain minerals are research tested and field proven to provide balanced mineral nutrition essential for cattle health, growth and reproduction. They're highly palatable so cattle consume what they need when they need it. And wind and rain mineral special formulation resists the elements so they won't blow out of the feeder and maintain their palatability even if they've been wet. Wind and rain cattle minerals from Purina Mills, building better cattle. Draxon, clearly Cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death loss. And with Draxon, we just found out that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see, nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. My name is Jeff Baxter and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager for the Vista Vaccine line. And today I'm going to visit with you about the unique mixing method for Vista vaccines. One of the things that occurs with a modified live vaccine like Vista is it is freeze dried during the manufacturing process. So as part of that freeze drying process, we need to rehydrate that vaccine. And today I'm going to demonstrate the unique mixing method for the 50 dose bottle of the Vista vaccines. First, stick the transfer needle into the cake vial to release the vacuum. Insert the needle all the way against the hub. Next, turn the cake vial upside down and insert the other end of the transfer needle into the diluent bottle. Again, you should insert the needle all the way against the hub. Turn the cake vial over again and squeeze a small amount of diluent into the cake vial to rehydrate it. Swirl the vial until the cake and diluent are mixed. Then turn the bottles so the rehydrated cake vial is on top. Give the diluent bottle one hard squeeze. Then set the bottles down with the cake vial on top. Allow the mixture from the cake vial to drain until the diluent bottle. Once all the mixture from the cake vial has drained into the diluent bottle, separate the bottle and remove the transfer needles. The last step is to remove the peel off label from the back of the cake vial and place it over the top of the diluent bottle label. These quick steps for rehydrating the Vista Modified Live Vaccine line will allow you to utilize the best technology on the market. For more information on this mixing method, please contact your local veterinarian to receive these mixing instructions for the 50 dose bottles of Vista. Let's return to South Dakota where reporter Dave Russell is getting some tips on preventing calf respiratory diseases. 
The positive working relationship between the Linscoff Thiel Ranch and Faith Veterinary Services is one Dr. Bill Burdett says is key to the success of any operation. And he says it's one he encourages as a technical services veterinarian. If you look at the Thiels and their ranching operation and their relationship with Dr. Winger, for example, they work very closely with her and vice versa. And those kinds of situations allow the, uh, the operation to glean, just as we were talking about, uh, the, the, the diagnostics. In other words, if they get on top of a problem, or try to see ahead of any potential problems, then they can maximize their health and production of their herd. We in technical services provide additional support in that we can look at different possibilities for uh, products, but not only products, uh, actually working with diagnostic labs and, and being able to interact with, with people in the field whether they be animal scientists or veterinarians, in order to bring even more expertise to the table. And working with the right, quality products also makes a difference when it comes to proactively managing your herd's health. The Vista products work well in our practice because they are low dose 2 cc's, they're sub-Q administration, which is very important because we um, adhere to BQA guidelines. Um, they are multivalent, which is very important, and they are economical. You know, in these times, we're trying to get the most we can for our money. And when you have great immunity with a good product that's easy on the cattle, that doesn't cost the ranch, well, that's important. Vista Once is a, uh, a seven-way respiratory prevention product, and it contains five viral antigens, the IBR, BBD type 1, BBD type 2, BRSV, and PI3, along with the Mannheimia, Pastorella combination, the Mannheimia hemolytica Pastorella multocida. And all seven of those agents are extremely common as it relates to bovine respiratory disease. And what I really like about Vista Once is it's, uh, it's a smooth product and it's, it's all live. And so the calf's immune system actually sees each of these seven organisms and is able to respond so that they get a complete immune response. I think that the interesting thing is about uh, 20 years ago, very typical to this region, as we got into late August, early September, we were having some down ears, a little coughing, typical signs of that. And uh, so we, we tried to be proactive and so we started a more rigorous vaccination program in the spring. And then uh, as we, we went past seven way and went into the IBR BVD combination, uh, respiratory shots, uh, we saw almost an immediate result. So we started using the Vista product and, uh, and I really like it. And I think that's helped us. And it's a combination of a solid vaccination program and a strong nutritional program that leads to overall herd health no matter your location. In this area of South Dakota where, uh, where we're at today, Vista Once and Vision 7 Somnus are used uh, pretty commonly together. And uh, that really includes much of the northern United States because of the incidence of Histophilus somni, which used to be called or Haemophilus somnus. These two particular vaccines are pretty stress-free. And many veterinarians, and I would encourage you to consult with your veterinarians because they are aware of what's going on in your area. They're aware of any problems that, that, that might in, uh, occur, but much of that combination of product has been used. Uh, in this area very successfully because they're relatively easy on cattle. That is one of my favorite uh, points about the Vista line of vaccines is there are multiple combinations. You can tailor any program to an individual or producer because you have choices there. Um, one thing that the company has done very well is they have a complementary uh, seven-way somnus or Haemophilus somnus product that works very well with the Vista Once. So you can get a lot of antigens in two shots, which definitely adhere to our BQA standards. Just like the health benefits Vista and Vision provide to cattlemen, Linscoff Thiel strives to provide quality products and services to their customers. I think probably the most important thing I've learned is uh, treat your customers the way you'd like to be treated. I, I have, have just a great customer base and uh, 
I think interaction with them, treating them with a good product and good service and, and a good attitude, I think that's probably the most enjoyable part of it, that and raising cattle. Reporting from Isabel, South Dakota, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For details on both the Vista and Vision lines of vaccines, please visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be right back. Fierce acceleration, the Gator XUV 825i will shatter your expectations. I'm Kevin Oxter, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Join me Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. You take pride in the beef you raise. Countless hours invested to assure a safe and wholesome calf crop. Why trust that calf crop to just anyone? Experience the new Dinklage difference with a long history and reputation for outstanding performance and cattle care. We use a combination of cutting edge technologies and data driven decision making to establish our place as leaders in the cattle feeding industry. Allow Dinklage to be a part of your team in the quest to maximize your profits with five locations to serve you in Wyoming, Nebraska and Colorado. For more information on the new Dinklage difference, Stop by one of our yards or visit us on the web at DinklageFeedYards.com. Cattlemen know about the importance of both education and of adapting to changing technologies. Now, a new resource is allowing cattlemen and women to qualify for the Beef Quality Assurance Program certification online with a teaching program that's available 24-7. Cattleman and Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla has more. The BQA's online training program allows beef producers and processors a way to keep current while learning at their own pace. The program recently came online after four years of development by Dr. Dan Thompson at Kansas State University. Everybody has a full-time job out there on whether it's in the feedlot or stalker operation and we have somebody new coming into into our into our fold or a new employee we may have people designated as trainers for our for our operations but sometimes that slips through the the cracks and so when we're already 100 percent employed adding a layer of training sometimes is, is not something that we can get done in a, in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. So having something that's a tool for the producers to take a look at online in English or in Spanish became pretty obvious to, to how imperative that could be for the industry. The bilingual online program covers nearly every aspect of the beef industry, from the daily tasks needed to keep cattle healthy and profitable to more specific duties like bookkeeping and animal transportation. The program is broken down into short video training modules. First of all, we started out with just focusing on, on some occupational safety and, and food safety type programs from conception to consumption. And then as we started to grow, people wanted more modules built. And so really this has been industry driven towards us. As the industry has identified areas in which they would like training uh, to be uh, captured for their employees, then they've come to us and, and we've been able to deliver those, those programs for them. We want to educate everyone in the, in the industry. We want to be able to provide an educational source for the office manager as well as the, the producer driving the truck. Um, we feel that those are all key components of our industry and we want to make sure that they're all trained properly and easily and we feel that our system provides that for them. Since its launch last year, about 8,000 beef producers across the country have used the online BQA program to become certified. It's available to anybody. 
Um, I know the program that we have through the BQA training, we have the soccer section, the cow-calf section, the feed yard section, and the comprehensive. So it's not, you know, not just one, you have the option to really tailor it to what's best for you. We've gotten great feedback. Um, we've gotten people that are that like the fact that they can sit down, do a couple modules at a time on their lunch break or in the evenings when it gets dark, and then it, so it's not a four hour time out of their day. They can sit down and do it piece by piece and then get through the training that way and still receive their um, BQA certificate. The online BQA program is not intended to replace on-the-job training. Instead, it's a way of supplying additional education in a constantly changing industry. It also lets producers document the number of people who have been certified. And so the producers can show whether it's safety, whether it's food safety, whether it's uh, animal welfare, animal abuse avoidance types of programs, the, the producers can show that our people are trained on this and the number one reason why we do it is to prevent it from happening. But we can't police everybody and when it does we can document training versus non-training and, and really give the industry some tools that, that I think they're going to be proud to use. Reporting from Manhattan, Kansas, I'm Brad Bulla for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Here in the studio to talk more about the new online BQA program and the National Beef Quality Audit is Tom Field, Executive Director of Producer Education for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Welcome, Tom. Hi, Kevin. Hey, tell us first of all, how is this new online program that uh, you all are talking about going to help producers, especially those that have not yet been certified? Well, BQA has traditionally been delivered by our state coordinators and our state partners across the country, and, and we'll continue to do that, and we have great faith and trust in their ability to deliver quality education. The online certification allows folks who can't get to a meeting because of their schedule, need to, to do a home study course, if you will, have to have that opportunity. So you go to www.bqa.org, click on certify, and what will happen is, is a map of the United States comes up, you click on your state, you get the name and address of your state coordinator if you want to do face-to-face -face training, or you go from there on into the, to the certification system and take the online courses. Um, so it, it, it's a way to make it more convenient for all our producers. Yeah, super convenient. All you have to have is access to some sort of computer, it sounds like. Right. And, and if you don't want to do the online, you've got access then to your state coordinator and away you go. Tell us a little bit about how the BQA standards are developed in the first place. Well, the BQA standards from the very beginning have been created by a technical advisory team of veterinarians, beef cattle production experts, uh, university folks, scientists and researchers, folks like Temple Grandin, for example, who really has, has put her stamp on our handling standards. Mm -hmm. And then we revisit those as new science, new information comes along, we upgrade those standards. Uh, and the reality is, is that we think when we look at the BQA standards compared to all the other programs that are out there, not only in, in the United States, but worldwide, uh, we have really, I think, the, the world-class standard. Well, and, and maybe you can share with our audience a little bit about what exactly is the National Beef Quality Audit in the first place. Well, the National Beef Quality Audit is really a, uh, a response to our initial efforts with beef quality assurance. Mm -hmm. uh, and the National Beef Quality Audit was conceived around the notion that there were probably things going on in our industry, either by not being aware of potentially some mistakes we were making or by just doing things the way we'd always done them, and we were leaving some money on the table. And so the first studies were done um, and started in 1991, and we've, we've run the, the National Beef Quality Audit essentially every four to five years since. Uh, and we're right now in the process of, of doing a new uh, a round of this, but what the National Beef Quality Audit does is it measures the impact of our product as perceived by the supply chain. So retailers, consumers, food service folks, uh, wholesalers, and, and we get a scorecard. And at the end of the day, we've got something to work against to improve the already enviable record we have, but to really work towards being absolutely the very best product on the market today. Yeah. Well, Tom, BQA has certainly allowed us to make some great strides in our industry, but there's still a lot of progress that can be made. How would you suggest producers get involved? Well, with the National Beef Quality Audit, where in the past we've really looked at the chain from really packer on to consumer, for the first time in this quality audit, we're actually asking feeders, stocker operators, 
cow-calf operators, seed stock operators, and dairymen will actually what they think and what their perceptions are about their practices on farm relative to quality. And we're asking folks to participate in an online survey uh, at www.cattlesurvey.com. It's about an eight to 10 minute survey, very simple. No individual results will ever be shared. They're all pooled together. We'll pool them by state and region. But we're gonna get a really farm to fork look at the National Beef Quality Audit. And what that's gonna let us do is have a lot more meaningful conversation with the full supply chain and leverage this data into value to grow beef demand, not only domestically, but also internationally. That's a great idea. Well, my compliments to you and your team for everything you're doing to uh, improve the quality of United States beef. It's our pleasure. For more information on the Beef Quality Assurance Program or the National Beef Quality Audit, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be right back. Consumers count on America's cattlemen to deliver quality beef every time. So in your daily work to raise cattle, keep quality top of mind in everything you do, in the care, feeding, and handling of your animals. You can be a part of a national program that provides sound, proven guidelines for beef cattle production that will establish you as a leader and responsible stockman. Beef Quality Assurance, or BQA, is a national program funded by the Beef Checkoff that can help you strengthen your operation, improve cattle care, drive more value to the bottom line, and increase consumer confidence in the quality of America's beef. Producers across the nation have embraced the BQA program because of their commitment to be the world's best producers of beef and because assuring beef quality is our job, not someone else's. Find out how you can become BQA certified. Visit the website bqa.org. Welcome back. Breeding and raising cattle sometimes seems more like an art than a science, but many producers are using new technologies that help them gather essential genetic information to develop and improve the quality of their current and future herds. Cattleman and Cattleman reporter Dave Russell has more from Southwest Nebraska. I love just being my own boss. I love working with working with animals. I, I've always enjoyed working with animals, uh, cattle, horses, uh, my crazy dog. I, I just love it all. Ron Hoffman has a commercial bred heifer development operation in western Nebraska. Over the years, he built a strong reputation for managing and developing heifers. But Ron felt he could go further and recently turned to DNA technology through the Igenity profile for replacement heifers. Without that, I was taking the heifers as far as I could get them with the management, as far as feed, as far as mineral, as far as breeding, uh, having the low birth weight bulls. But with this tool, I can go further because I know more about the animals. It, it's in their genetics. It takes a lot of the risk out of, out of buying a buying a, a heifer. Uh, that's one of the, the big things that that you get when you buy uh, a heifer that you don't know a lot about. Uh, you just, you don't know what you're getting and, and if we can eliminate that that unsurety for our customers, our, our heifers will be worth more. He was looking for more. He was looking to identify uh, greater opportunities to, uh, to improve his customer's success. And, and for me to be a part of that and, uh, and helping him do that is, uh, is really going to be very gratifying. The Igenity profile allows producers to evaluate traits that were previously expensive or difficult to measure, especially in young animals. Without this information, a producer's herd genetics may actually be pointing in the wrong direction. And producers like Ron are convinced of its importance in helping reach their goals faster. Take the guesswork out of it. Know, know what you're doing, know what you're getting, know where you can take your herd. Uh, I watched my mom and dad struggle for probably 40 years to build a cow herd. And they had so many missteps and sidesteps uh, with different bulls that maybe didn't work out like they thought they would or for whatever reason. And, and they got there, but with using the Igenity profile, you can take 
a cow herd where you want it to be in the lifetime of a cow and not in the lifetime of a rancher. Commercial producers can use the inside information from the Igenity profile for replacement heifers to make more confident purchasing decisions and select replacement heifers with more confidence. Oftentimes, uh, many of these heifers that we uh, either purchase as potential replacement heifers, we know very little about them other than potentially their source. So this gives us a, a very cost-effective tool that we can uh, evaluate a number of these traits that are really important to commercial uh, operations profitability. Traits like average daily gain, stability, uh, maternal calving ease, uh, tenderness, and, uh, and percent choice. If we can both identify the, the very high profiling animals and also the low profiling animals, uh, we can better, better fit the different heifers to our different customers and, and their end goals and how, how they sell their cattle, how they market their cattle. And that's, that's the whole thing is to try and better serve our customers. Uh, our repeat buyers are our, the backbone of our business and so the better we can, can do those, treat those people, the better we can do. The Igenity Profile offers inside information in that it is information that is not affected by the age of the animal, it's not affected by the uh, nutrition, the plane of nutrition, the management of that animal. It's really looking at the genetic potential that that animal, uh, that animal possesses. And that information, because it's not time sensitive, whenever we can collect that information, it allows you to, as a commercial producer, to uh, employ whatever strategies for your, uh, for your benefit. We'll have more from Southwest Nebraska when we return. Comprehensive, practical, powerful. Now's the time to put the power of DNA to work in your herd with the comprehensive Igenity Profile. The inside information from Igenity can help you make more confident replacement heifer and herd sire selection decisions, add marketability to your feeder cattle, make faster genetic progress, and more. The best time to get started is when you're already working cattle during branding, weaning, or bull soundness exams. Get started today. Visit Igenity.com or call 1-877-IGENITY to put the power of DNA to work in your herd. Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Dave Russell in southwest Nebraska who's learning more about the advantages of DNA technology. Fired. Collecting each animal's DNA for the Igenity profile is a quick and simple procedure that can be done during regular processing. In the fall we get the calves in and then we, uh, in our normal processing, uh, we run them through then and give them their booster shots probably six weeks after we get them. Give them their booster shots and uh, bangs vaccination and then at that time is when we collected the DNA sample we used the, the three-piece tag and so it was it was very convenient it was no more times through the shoot or anything else it was just a matter of of clicking a tag and 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 recording the data the number so it it was really painless it is just another tool in your selection toolbox in your management toolbox or in your marketing toolbox but with that information really the the investment that you make in this information uh, if you spread it out over the cost of, of maybe per calf sired by a bull, it really comes down to literally pennies uh, what the investment is and the amount of uh, genetic improvement that you can make uh, based on that, uh, on that investment. I think one of the biggest things in my operation with, a, with a supplying heifers to people is, it, is not only identifying the, the really top end heifers, but also identifying heifers that should not be a replacement heifer. They may look like they should be, but they may not really be. And they, they might be a heifer that's going to have a high probability of coming up open in a few years, and that's the biggest, the biggest downfall. Uh, in any ranch is, is an open female. You just, that's, that's a no-no, that's an economic disaster. And so if we can identify those that have those traits, that's a big help to our customers. That makes a big impact on their bottom line. 
Igenity works with producers, gathering the samples and then interpreting the profile results, while helping the producer make more confident decisions. The thing that I really enjoy about uh, my job is really learning what individual goals and operation a producer has and helping them apply this, uh, this DNA, this identity profile to, uh, to their operation so they, can, uh, so they can make genetic progress or, or assist in marketing. Whatever their goals may be, uh, we can help them. With this additional information, uh, you, you have the opportunity to tailor your, uh, your genetic program for potentially different markets that may come up uh, into the future. You don't have to be focused on one particular aspect of your operation. You may be able to uh, break your operation into a couple of different categories, market your animals in a couple of different ways. Uh, certainly that's going to depend on the size and the scope of the operation. But again, the thing that I really appreciate about, uh, about the identity profile is that it's, it's information that's not influenced by environment, it's not influenced by nutrition or, or the animal's health. It's information from its DNA, it's, it's, it's genetic potential that you're looking at and that you can have the opportunity to manage. In the meantime, Ron says he's already getting a positive response from his customers about the identity profile. In a word, anticipation. Our, we've talked about it with our with our uh, repeat buyers, and, and that we're going to be uh, profiling uh, their herds this fall, so that we know we'll build their ideal heifer, what they want for their herd, and 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 how they feel it'll best fit fit their breeding program, and then we will be able to fit our heifers into the heifers that fit that profile. Will be their heifers, and and so they're they're really excited about it. It helps us choose the, uh, the right animals for the right producers for the right situation. Reporting from Bayard, Nebraska, I'm Dave Russell for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Commercial producers who breed their own heifers can also use the identity profile in their replacement heifer selection decisions to improve their herd's genetic potential. Now, for more information about the comprehensive identity profile, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Stay with us. Baxter Black is up next. Lots of cowmen put a little extra into their calves, hoping it'll bring them another nickel at the sale, like preconditioning, early weaning, or for specialty markets. But how can the buyer trust your claim? Old vaccine bottles or your ratty tally book? Truth is, this little green ear tag will be all you need. That's what IMI Global does, third-party verification. A seal of approval, like the nutrition label on your Twinkie. Did I say Twinkie? IMIGlobal.com. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. Trivia quiz. This week our contestants are Tracto Man, Little Darlin', Little Darlin', good to see you. Oh, yes. And Pick Handle. I will read the subject and the multiple choice answers. When you know the right one, sound your gong. Question number one Polled Cow. A. One that is turned out near the North Pole. B. One that is raised in Poland. Or C, one that has been contacted by George Gallup. <laughs> Little darling. C. Yeah. Let's give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give her a big hand. Good. All right, we're going to the next one. Hog finishing equipment. A, lipstick in a sleazy bar. <laughs> Little darling. A. Wow, yes! Yes, that's correct, yes! Let's hear it for little darling. All right, you guys keep trying, keep trying. 
The next one, two inch ball. A, a bumper attachment. B, a short cry. Or C, a small dance floor. <laughs> Little darling, you're so quick. Do you know the answer? B. That's close. <laughs> C. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. All right, open cow. One that is gullible to suggestion. B, the name of a new McDonald's burger. Or C, instructions for doing a cesarean section. Yes. Um, Little darling, can you remember? No. Oh, it's an open cow. Okay. Open it. Let me read them to you again. Gullible to suggestion. Name of a new McDonald's burger or instructions for doing a cesarean. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. All right. Let's hear it for Little Darling. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the Ag Trivia Quiz on Baxter Black from Alton Zane. Thanks, Baxter, for that educational insight. That's it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.